Here's how to build anything using DeepSeek AI agents, even if you have no coding experience. Real quick, in case you're wondering why DeepSeek is such a big deal, I think Jim Fan put it the best. We're living in a timeline where a non-US company is keeping the original mission of OpenAI alive. Truly open frontier research that empowers all. Makes no sense, the most entertaining outcome is the most likely. And I completely agree. DeepSeek R1 is the first, is probably the most revolutionary model since ChatGPT because it's the first open source reasoning model that can really compare to OpenAI's O1 or O3. For what we're going to be building today, DeepSeek R1, the reasoning model, is going to be perfect for our use case. But of course, the craziest part is that DeepSeek beat OpenAI on multiple benchmarks, as you can see here. Being an open source model, that's just crazy. To get started, you are going to need a DeepSeek API key. I decided to go with this option instead of the open source for this build because not everyone is going to have a computer that's capable of running a DeepSeek model. I just topped up my balance with two bucks and then went to the API keys, created a new API key, and then copy that into your cursor project in the .env file, which I will create a template for so that you can follow. Now in my cursor project, I have a bunch of files. You could ignore all that. All you need is an empty main.py file. You right click, go to new file, type in main.py for the name, and then the .env, which is gonna be in the description. And then what we are going to do is use Cursor Composer to start developing our app. I went ahead and searched up the documentation for how to make that API call that we'll need. And you can see here, there's some nice code in Python for exactly how to do it. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste it into Composer and say, hey, please add uh, a chatbot interface in the console with a deep seek. And you can see now it has updated the file for us. And that looks amazing. And it's following the example we gave it, which is perfect. I am going to accept the entire file of changes. And I noticed one thing, which is that we need to install OpenAI, the SDK first, as it says here. So just go back into Composer, go to the terminal. If you don't have terminal, you can go to view and then open terminal right here or control this tilde key. And then you can paste that in, pip3 install OpenAI. And I already had it installed, which is perfect. Before we can run DeepSeek, we need to update this DeepSeek API key import. So I'm just going to ask Cursor to do that for me. Import from the .environment file, the API key. And it'll figure out how to do all that for us. And it came back with these changes. And I think everything looks good. So I'm going to accept the file and try to run our Python 3 main.py. And it's presented me with a nice chatbot interface in the console. So I'll just say hi there, see if it's working. And you can see the assistant has responded with, hello, how can I assist you? So it is working. Our first version, the most basic API call to DeepSeek is perfect. For level two, we're going to be building a web search agent using the Pydantic library. Now you are going to like this because this next project is going to be a clone of Perplexity AI, which is a literally million dollar company. And yet the code to build this is so easy. But you may ask, what is Pydantic? Well, Pydantic is the most underrated Python library in the world, in my opinion. And their most killer feature is how simple and easy to use their AI agent framework is. So many frameworks like Crew AI are bloated and not super reliable, whereas Pydantic just feels like an agent framework you can use to build production-ready agents right there. We are building a web search agent with DeepSeek, and of course, they are one of the hottest types of agents right now. It is so important to connect your agents to the internet to get that updated information. To actually connect our agent to the web, we're going to be using the Brave Search API, which is specifically made for this purpose. And it is easy to use and it's free. But check this out. I hit up Cursor with this prompt. Please create a simple web search agent using the Brave API as a tool. Here are the docs on how to use agents with Pydantic in the Composer. Our problem is Cursor doesn't actually know how to use the Pydantic agents API. So what we're going to do is we can do two options. First, copy all the information on this page, all the examples, and then just paste it into cursor. The other option is we just say at docs in cursor. And then what we can do is click add new doc and then paste in the link to the Pydantic docs into here. And then I'll just say uh, the docs like that and then hit confirm. And now if I want to ask composer a Pydantic question or have it do something in the code base, I could just say at Pydantic and then it now knows all that information. So a nice hack for you. Now, after some back and forth with Cursor, it finally developed an entire file that works perfectly. And I want to show you how it works. So first off, you're importing a bunch of libraries. You, it's not super important what each library does, but the most important, we are importing Pydantic AI. 
Next, we are importing the dependencies for Pydantic. This includes the client as well as the Brave API key. Next up, we instantiate our agent and we pass in a very simple system prompt. You are an expert at researching the web to answer user questions and then pass in the current date. And I love how simple this agent execution is. Next up, we are going to use and create the web search tool. This agent tool is super simple. All it really does is make the API call to the Brave web search API using the provided web query. So that's gonna be the query that the LLM decides to use if it decides to use the tool to do a web search and then the context dependencies, which include the API key. But I have another version of this agent, which includes a streamlit interface. So it's a real UI. You can interact with it in a more robust way. And I won't be coding this one line by line since I don't want this video to be an hour long, but I will demo this one for you real quick. Now our agent with a UI is running and I'm going to ask it to find the latest article on the newest OpenAI model and just submit that. And the cool thing about this agent is it actually does have chat history. So it will remember the past chats that you have with it. Now that response did take a little time. So I asked Cursor to make some adjustments to the code, but as you can see, we got back the exact thing we were seeking. Let's move on to the last project. Now this last AI agent use case is very special. It's a open source project called WebUI. And what it does is it makes websites accessible for AI agents. So this is an amazing option if you wanna build AI agents that can really interact with real browser instances like Google. So for example, here, you could say, you could see the, of course it is compatible with DeepSeek, which is what we are going to be using today. It also has a really good installation guide, whether you are on Windows or Linux or Mac, you can get it working. And I just got it working right now. So this is what it looks like. The, I'm gonna go to run agent and try running an agent to do something like go to Google and type OpenAI. So we're gonna see what happens. Now you can see the DeepSeek agent is navigating to Google, typing in the OpenAI query and doing the navigation by itself, which is so awesome. And they even have an alternative to OpenAI's deep research. As you can see, I asked the AI to compose a report and what it's doing right now is navigating by itself. I'm not typing on the keyboard. It navigated to the different websites and is now composing a report to return to me. And that's all open source. Honestly, as we get more advanced with AI agents like these and encounter new models to use like DeepSeek and new frameworks. I think it is crucial. We think about more than just demos and how to really take these demos and deploy these agents to production and create real value. If you'd like this video and want to see more, give this video a like or sub. Thanks for watching.